you a fan of this podcast? Do you wish there was even more juicy content for you to sink your ears into? Well, there is. You can become a premium member of this podcast for $5.99 a month and get full access to an archive of over 50 bonus episodes. Additionally, we release a bonus episode every single month. That's a ton of extra content, including my personal interior design diaries, extra tips, my talking about trends, and so much more. Additionally, you'll be keeping us on the airwaves each and every week because your premium membership money goes directly back to making this podcast amazing. Check us out at affordableinteriordesign.com, click on podcast to learn more and to become a premium member today. need a high-end designer or a lot of money to get a luxe look. Be your own interior designer. This is Affordable Interior Design, the podcast. Here's your host, Betsy Hellman. Hello, everybody. I have a new online boyfriend. That's right, guys. New online boyfriend. And I just had my first date today. And if you listened to my diary episode last week, you know I'm not referring to a man. I am referring to a man shun. No, I'm referring to a house. Uh, So I've been waiting two weeks because the preview for this house was up for two weeks before you could legally go see it. I've been drooling a yellow house with teal shutters and a bright teal door a little cottage in the back, all trimmed in teal. I have been obsessing, picking out the wallpaper, picking the dining chairs, imagining how we'd be together, imagining how I would feel walking in the door, just like when I used to online date. And I'd see the pictures and just know we were meant to be. So last night, I really had a hard time sleeping because this morning I was going to drive and go set foot in this house. Today was the day I had my appointment. My date, my hot date was set for one o'clock. I pull into the driveway. Oh, well, maybe I should tell you something else before. Did I share this on the, I don't think I did because this is a little extreme. So, you know, for two weeks, I wasn't allowed to go see this space um, because it's just on preview. But I had been sent all the paperwork. I'd looked at all the things online. And there's a nature trail that goes right behind this house. And it's Memorial Day weekend. And my kids and I have some availability because all of our friends have COVID. We just got over COVID. We're finally feeling good. We're able to get out of bed. Let's get out of the house and move our bodies around. So I said, kids, let's drive an hour to Connecticut to take a hike on the nature trail that goes behind the house. Maybe we could see a little something. I could at least drive by the driveway and peek and see what it looks like. So I take my poor children in 90 degree weather to this nature trail an hour from our house. We pack waters and Lunchables and I'm in it to win it and we're walking and While we're walking, I'm telling them all about what their rooms will look like, and we're talking about how we'll decorate them. I mean, I'm really bringing them into this fantasy world, not only to get them excited about a move that they're not so excited about, but also because it's all I can think about. All right, so fast forward, last night, can't sleep today, I'm going to go see it. I pull into the driveway. I'd already peeked down the driveway this weekend, so I had a sense, but we walk inside. And it's even better than the pictures. My boyfriend was amazing. And if you've been online dating, if you've been looking for houses, you know they're never better than the pictures. They have the wide angle lens, the professional photographer. It's never better than the pictures. It's better. I got the tingles. I got the chills. Hi, yeah, 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 yeah. But can I share something that's kind of interesting and, and weird? And then and then we'll move to your questions. Because luckily, you guys have had some questions this week. But they had a virtual 3D tour. 
online. So of course, I've been through every door. I've looked at every angle. They have like a virtual measuring tool. I've been measuring walls and calculating where everything will go. Uh, But there was one door to one of the bedrooms that was quote unquote virtually locked. You couldn't go in there. It wouldn't open. And I kept pressing the button and pressing the button and it would not open. So I was really excited to see that bedroom today because I had seen every other inch of this house. I mean, I'd practically memorized it. So we're walking through the house. We get to the second floor. The um, listing agent is showing us and there's a sign on the door that says you can't go in that bedroom. And there's like a little picture and a little description of what's going on. And I say to the guy, I say, I have been waiting to go in this room for two weeks. And he's like, sorry, no one's allowed access. They're not going to show this room until the house is sold. Like, what? Shouldn't you be allowed to go in there for like an inspection or just to see something or to make sure you like it? I mean, what's in there? But they absolutely will not open it until you purchase the house. So who knows what I'm getting into, but it's just like online dating where they're so perfect on paper and then they're so perfect on person. What's the catch? There must be a catch, but I'm going to marry this house anyway. (laughs) I don't care what's in that damn room. It's probably like a ghost or a dead body or, I don't know, but um, it's getting to the point because I have to move out in exactly a month. It's getting to the point where I'll make anything work, but this house makes my heart go pity pat. So guys, I think I want to propose to my boyfriend, so I'm going to write an offer tomorrow, even though my husband has not seen it. Uh, That's the way I roll. We have no time to waste in this hot, hot market, and I'm a single girl with a dream. And by single, I mean I don't have a house, but I do have a husband, and we're going to marry this house. And now it's time for a quick commercial break. Do you love this podcast? Do you wish you could learn even more? Well, we have an online class bundle. Our online class bundle is comprised of three online classes, Beautifying Your Home for Less, Styling Your Home, and The Fundamentals of Feng Shui. Each one of those three classes is between 30 and 45 minutes long and chock filled with visuals and tips, things that will help you to style your own space or help out with other spaces. Additionally, with the pack of three classes, you get an autographed copy of my book, Affordable Interior Design. You get all of that for only $99. Once again, that's the three online classes as well as the book for only $99. You just go to affordableinteriordesign.com slash classes. Once again, affordableinteriordesign.com slash classes to buy your bundle today. And if one of those classes sounded intriguing, but maybe you already have my book or some of the other topics are not of interest, you can buy the classes individually at that site as well. Each class is $40. So head over to affordableinteriordesign.com slash classes to get your bundle or your online class today. Now you guys have also shared some updates with me. So let me dig into this mailbag here. My first question comes from Brenda. And Brenda writes, we're getting ready to finish our basement and we want to know your advice. We're thinking of installing built-ins and wainscoting. We are contemplating having the built-ins black as well as the wall because they'll be installed on the same wall as the TV. But we were considering the wainscoting to be white, which will be installed on all the other walls. Which color would you suggest for the built-ins, wainscoting and for the walls? Our design style is Scandinavian Coastal Farmhouse. Thank you for all your helpful tips I receive listening to your weekly podcast. I can't wait to hear your advice. Brenda from British Columbia, Canada. Well, Brenda, thank you for sending this in and thank you for sending in the picture. It's just a rendering if you guys are looking on YouTube. So it's just a computer drafted rendering, which doesn't give me too much visual information. But um let's dig right in. So typically built-ins are the same paint color and finish as the trim and molding in the room. And wainscoting is considered molding. So typically in contemporary society, we would do it a shade of white. 
you know, back in the day, this house I'm looking at, they often used to paint the trim a color and have the walls be that much lighter, neutral, even white. But nowadays, people pick a color for the walls oftentimes, and they do that white for the trim. So that's what one would typically do. And Brenda, you've mentioned that this is a basement, so it probably does not get a natural light. It doesn't have like a source or a lot of windows. I certainly don't see any in this rendering. So I'm worried that if you paint the built-ins black, not only is it going to be a little unconventional, but it's also going to make this room quite dark and cavey because, you know, basements can feel a little cavey. They don't all have to be damp. They don't all have to be kind of stuffy. But oftentimes, even if they do have significant windows, they can still feel a little bit colder temperature-wise and just feeling wise. Uh, I'm going to recommend, and I oftentimes recommend that people, you know, keep it kind of lighter and brighter. So it is an inviting space versus something that you really don't want to hang out in. That being said, you know, the flip side of that is if you're trying to make this some kind of really moody movie room, which you didn't tell me in the email, nor do I see that reflected in any images. But if you were going to make it a really moody movie room where you're going to turn off all the lights and have thick velvet curtains, well, I might be giving you a different type of advice. But in general, for basements, I want to warm up the space. And so I would do the built-ins the same color as the trim, which would be a version of the white. I would do the wainscoting, that same version of the white. It would either be a semi-gloss finish if the walls are eggshell, or it would be a satin finish if the walls are flat or matte. And then I would do some kind of color on the walls that's ideally something a little bit warm. So if you want to keep it completely neutral, maybe it's a cream versus a cool white. Or maybe it is a buff kind of color that skews almost yellow. Or maybe it's like a wheat type of yellow color. You could even think about a cool color that ideally has a touch of warmth, like a green. Green has a touch of warmth because yellow plus blue make green. So it's a little bit of both, but I would just make sure not to do anything too dark, nothing like emerald or a rich Kelly. Instead, I would skew towards a lighter, perkier sage, um, maybe even a silver sage, but you just don't want it to get too gray because again, it's going to be cold. Now, if you can just choose anything you want, and it doesn't sound like there's any restrictions to me, I would always start by choosing that inspiration piece first. Either it's the rug or the artwork or, you know, drapes if there are windows in this space, because then that can guide you as to the paint color. If you pick the pink color first, you've kind of pigeonholed yourself into working with a certain color in a certain palette. So unless you're going with a complete neutral, like that cream I referred to earlier, pick the inspiration piece first first, and then I always choose the paint color after I've selected all the items for the room. I can kind of see what the room needs, and I can do a color match if I want. There's thousands of paint colors at my fingertips, but maybe only 50 rugs that meet the size, texture, color specifications. So let's start with the harder things and find the easy thing afterward. Another thing that I just can't move to the next question without telling you, Brenda, is that no, you are not Scandinavian coastal farmhouse. You mentioned that you listen to my podcast, which I love, but I need you to also retain when you listen to my podcast, Brenda. This might be a little bit of a Betsy Smackdown, but we're only one style word in the space. So upstairs, maybe you're Scandinavian. Downstairs, maybe you're farmhouse right? In your bedroom, maybe you're coastal. But for rooms that open up into each other, you want to make sure that you keep that style word consistent and you can change the feel word. But you can't have three styles going on at once, in my opinion. In my opinion, you need to go back to what I've mentioned so many times before, which is that two-word phrase. One style word, that's the style of the space, and one feeling word how you want to feel in the space. And then if you want it to be really designerly, which if you're listening to this podcast, I know you do, you're going to make it a three-word phrase instead of a two-word phrase. And you're going to add that third word, which never changes. It's always sophisticated. 
All right. So Brenda, when you're shopping for things, when you're picking paint colors, you're going to put it through that litmus test. Does it fit the style word? Does it fit the feeling word? And is it sophisticated? All right, let me move to my next question, which comes from Justine. Justine is writing in from Philadelphia and she says, hi, Betsy, you were out of questions. So here goes. We recently removed the wall between our dining room and our kitchen. Now the space is completely opened up but I'm unsure of how to make it feel cozy. Where do we place our dining room table? Should I move the dining room to the room off the kitchen? It used to be a playroom. Should I create a seating area in front of the kitchen? I hate when you walk in our front door, you immediately see the dining room. What's the best way to separate the entry from this room? The furniture that you see in the photos is being replaced, but I have not picked out any new pieces yet. The only thing that's definitely staying is the island with the marble top. The cabinet color is Benjamin Moore Booth Bay Gray, which is a gray, green, blue. It looks baby blue in the pictures. I'm not committed to the accent wall color in the former playroom. I can change that easily. Any help would be most appreciated. Thank you so much, Justine. Now, the exciting thing, and you'll hear me clicking here if you're listening to the podcast, and uh, if you're watching on YouTube, you'll see some images popping up. But Justine has sent me lots of great images to help illustrate the situation. And you'll hear me clicking through because I like to look at these while I'm giving advice. So yes, it can be really challenging when you open up the space because you're basically removing the delineation. You're saying what used to be a room is now no longer an architectural room. It could be a zone right? And we could define that zone with rugs. We could define that zone with color palettes as separate from this other zone because we're using the color palette in a different way, right? But it is harder when you break down walls to create that separation. Now with the pictures, I'm having a hard time piecing together exactly how this room fits. You know, a floor plan might have been helpful in this tricky situation because I can't really understand where the entry door is. The one thing I will caution against is if you do have a dining area right next to the entryway, you want to make sure if you're not fastidious and super tidy, like I am not, that you have some kind of console, some kind of place that's very specific, very um, intentional, where you're putting your handbag, your coat, your keys, your mail. Otherwise, your dining table becomes that console. In other words, it becomes not a dining table, but a dumping ground. If it's the first thing you see when you walk in your home, if there's no other station where I can train or habituate myself to putting these things, I'm just going to throw them on the dining table. I see it time and time again. And even if you're quite fastidious, the rest of your members of your family may not be. And then that could become a point of contention with you and the kids always throwing their backpacks there, you and the husband, him always throwing his keys there. So you just want to make sure in these open spaces where the dining table is so accessible that you create other landing spots before you get there. I do think it's an interesting idea to swap the placements of the dining area and that living room. The only problem with that is there is a chair rail in the dining area and chair rails are, you know, that molding that kind of comes up three quarters of the, or not three quarters, excuse me, one third of the way. Can you tell I'm still sick? I got over the COVID, but I am stuffy. I am foggy. You can hear it in my voice. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see it in my face. COVID was no joke. I was double vaccinated, boosted so cautious, and uh, it was pretty rough. So it's been a journey, a journey. But I do think there's something interesting to what you're saying. However, a chair rail typically connotes a dining room because it's called a chair rail. When you push out your chair, it's not going to hit the wall. It'll hit the molding instead. And that chair rail somewhat protects the wall from chairs and scuffs. So, you know, it's prominently featured in that dining area and may look a little strange if you put a living area in there, especially because in the living area, there is no chair rail. The other thing that you might want to think about is just do you have 
Well, let me word this a different way. Which of the spaces is larger? That would really be the determinant for me because they're both right off the kitchen. So both easy access for carrying the platters, carrying the dishes, um, you know, seating. But the bigger space, the bigger open zone should really house the comfortable seating and the TV viewing. That's one thing I'll definitely say. So I don't have the measurements here, but I would request that you take those measurements yourself. The other thing is the family room that you're using right now or living room, it has um, lots of walls. It's very enclosed. And the thing I love about lots of walls when you're trying to watch TV is that you have options for that parallel TV viewing. The area that's currently the dining area that you see right when you walk in, well, it is quite open and only appears to have two usable walls. So it's also going to be quite tricky to place furniture in that area so that, you know, you're having good feng shui. You can clearly see the main points of access, people coming and going. But also you have a wall for the TV so that you can watch TV in comfort without craning your neck in some awkward way. The other thing to think about, which is something I've been thinking about when looking at houses, is when I'm cooking, I really don't want to hear my kids watching TV. I like to get in my own zone. I don't want to have to watch their show. So when I see a place personally that has a kitchen that's open to a family room, I'm like, oh no, I'm going to have to watch their shows or I'm going to have to send them to a different room to watch their iPad because I am definitely not watching AFMAO while I am making spaghetti. Uh, if that resonates at all with you, then it might make sense to leave that dining table right where it is and not have it be so open to the kitchen. The family room looks a little bit more separate, so you can get a little bit more separation um, in terms of those two activities, if that makes sense. Well, there's a lot to think about, obviously, as you're evaluating the floor plan, but my number one piece of feedback for you, Justine, is to just take a measurement, and whichever space is larger should probably be the family room. I hope that helped. I hope I've given you some good guidance there. And guys, I really appreciate you sending on all these questions. The mailbag is now piling right up just like I like it. Tons of inspiration. Maybe you're listening and you have a question for me. You can go to affordableinteriordesign.com slash podcast. Once again, affordableinteriordesign.com slash podcast. There's a little button you can press to submit your question. I would love to answer it. And there's also other buttons to explore. Subscribe to our podcast, write a review, become a premium member so you get a bonus episode every month. There's so many ways to support the podcast and also to get additional content. So head over to affordableinteriordesign.com slash podcast where you can see so much more, including show notes and including all these wonderful pictures. Until next week, everybody. Bye. You've asked for it and we have answered the call. For years, you've been saying, Betsy, You're talking about all these great design concepts, but we can't visualize them. You're describing the picture that the listener sent in of their problem, and we wish we could see that picture too. After all, a picture is worth a thousand words, and I do my best to describe them, but there's nothing like seeing it for yourself. And that's why Affordable Interior Design, the podcast, now has a YouTube channel. Not only do we have a YouTube channel where you could see recordings and clips of these podcast episodes, we also have an Instagram, a Facebook, and so many other exciting things. You should check it out. Head over to affordableinteriordesign.com slash links. Once again, affordableinteriordesign.com slash L-I-N-K-S links. And when you go there, you will see links to our YouTube page, our Instagram page, our Facebook page, and more. Please check it out, follow and subscribe so you can see everything I'm talking about. A 
big thank you to our amazing producer, Catherine Heller, to Aton and the MBCR House Band, and to Affordable Interior Design, the sponsor of this podcast and the premier place to get an amazing look on a budget. Check out affordableinteriordesign.com. If you guys love the show, the very best way to support us is by spreading the word. Tell your friends or write us an awesome review on iTunes. So until next week, guys, thanks so much for joining us, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.